<laughs> Adam and Gaynor, you are thick in the middle of rehearsals right now. Um, how has that been? If I ask Gaynor first, what has it been like, you know, rehearsing for an actual live play at the moment? Oh, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have live theatre back and to be doing a Peter James show is, is just a dream. It's fantastic. And, you know, Josh Andrews is putting it on, who's producing the show, is just taking a leap of faith to put this on and it's fantastic. And, you know, the audiences are in for a real old treat. It's been brilliant. We're, we're it, week one of rehearsals and meeting Adam for the first time, meeting, you know, Jonathan, the director, and um, just fantastic. There's some incredible cast members and everyone's brilliant. And the story is brilliant and just getting to grips and just knowing that we're gonna be on stage is wonderful. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get it out there to all the different theatres and um, travel around the country and just step. And those when those theatre curtains go up, it's just um, magical. Can't wait. And Adam, how about you? How's it been so far? It's, it's been brilliant. Um, it's that just getting back to work, just getting back to some sense of normality. Um, people doing what they, they've always wanted to do. Um, it's, we need to get the theatres back up and running, um, not just for us, not just for Josh and Peter, but for everyone. So many people in this industry have, have been devastated over the last 15 months. I mean, not, not just the theatre industry, but every, everyone has. And we, we need the theatres back to give us, give everyone a lift, give them, okay, maybe not to laugh and joke about in this production, but, just for people, <laughs> well, I'll try, but it's not really that funny in places. Um, it's, yeah, people need to go out. They need to be entertained. They, look, we've, we've, we've had enough of watching Netflix. Come on, there's, there's only so much money heist and stuff you can watch. Um, yeah, it's, it's about time people had a chance to go back out, back to the theatre, to see proper live theatre again. Peter, obviously, you're naturally a, a novelist and, you know, probably one of the greatest novelists of all time, if that's not inflating your ego too far. Um, but, keep going, um, keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what does it feel like when you're sat in an audience knowing that these are your characters that have come from your brain uh, actually in front of you on a stage? It's a great question. I remember um, in an earlier stage play of, of Dead Simple, Tina Hobley was playing on the characters and she turned to me and she said, you must feel like God. <laughs> because we were all inside your head and now we're all standing here in front of you and it was, it was a great analogy um, I I just love it I've always loved the live theatre um, and you know Josh Andrews when I've, who I've known for a long time um, when he first asked me if I'd ever thought of having a novel adapted for the stage I said to him, mate, this has been a lifelong dream. I used to, as a kid, my parents had a regular Thursday night seats at the Theatre Royal in Brighton. Mm -hmm. And I used to sit four rows back from the front and I would just watch that curtain come up and I'd dream that one day something I wrote might, might appear. Uh, wow. So uh, I, I, I get a massive kick out of it. I just love it. And, and do you know what I love also is, I like the, the sense of danger you get in the theatre. <laughs> You know, every page of every one of my novels is always going to be the same. You know, every 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 time you play the video of Grace, it's going to be the same. Every stage performance is different, and things go wrong. No, 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 no. We'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and when they when they go I think wrong, that's... sorry, Gamer. No, no. I was just going to say, for an actor, it's really good to keep it varied as well. You know, and and to to play with it to a degree, you know, you obviously you've got set marks and you've got set things to do and to get across, but actually to keep on, you know, um, discovering, always keep on discovering. It, it keeps it fresh and it keeps it, you know, alive. Well, Sean, who's adapted it, he's, he's been quite willing to us for us so far, um, just during rehearsals, just to change the odd little word here and there. He's, he's, he's been okay with that. So is, is this licensed, Peter, but we can, um, we can change the ending. <laughs> <laughs> change the beginning, change the beginning. Change, I mean, let, you know, let's make it about a knitting class in the Amazon forest, shall we? <laughs> but I, I remember when we had Dead Simple on tour and Jamie, uh, Dead Simple was the, the first one I saw, one before, one before Looking Good Dad. And there was this scene in which, right at the, first, the beginning, 
um, it's a stagmite prank that goes wrong and they decide to bury the groom in a coffin uh, in, in remote woods and they're going to leave him there for two hours to pay him back for all the pranks he's played on his mates. So then they're going to come back and dig him up. And so they get him drunk, they drive him in the woods and lure him in the coffin. And the stage set was phenomenal. We had a glass sided, it was like a two tier floor. So you actually saw woods, you saw this van with the headlights coming towards the audience. We saw them put him in the coffin, lure him into the glass, so he's lying there. And then in the story, they, they drive off and they hit a cement truck head on and they're all killed and he's left stuck there. And oh. so and it, it, Josh and Sean and, and Ian Talbot, the, the director that managed to get the most incredible effects, almighty well, bang, the whole theatre went dark, even the emergency lights went off. And then Jamie voice cries out for a walkie talkie, where am I? And somebody in the audience shouted out, you're in Woking, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean about things going wrong. <laughs> love it, love it. That's brilliant. <laughs> and then Peter, then why do you think that your books translate so well onto the stage? And what do you think it is about them that's got that magic touch? I think, Theatre is very much about people. It's about actors playing characters. And I, in, in my writing, I always put at the very heart of writing um, character, I, I think there are three elements to a novel, which is character, research, plot, and deliberately in that order. People read books to find out what happens to characters they engage with. But they also want to know that the books feel authentic, feel real. Um, which is, and those two elements, plot is important, but you won't care about the plot if you don't first and foremost care and feel for the characters. So at the heart of all my books, and particularly Roy Grace books and all of them, is the nucleus of, 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 of the characters. And very often, as in Looking Good Dead, it's a, a family setting, uh, slightly uh, husband sort of struggling financially, wife on the booze, um, and it's things happening. So it works really well in the kind of crucible of the theater. First, you've got this, this, this tight knit of um, the family. And then I think peril works wonderfully in the theater because you've got the thing that we haven't, and the end was just saying it earlier about, you know, we've all had enough of Netflix, you know, where we were sitting on our own. It, in the theater, it's a wonderful feeling when you get a, co a collective gasp or collective mm. laughter, you get that communal experience that you're just never going to get uh, watching television at home or uh, reading a book. It, 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 it adds a magic. And I think particularly thrillers work wonderfully well on the theatre because if you really get a, a buzz going and, and people get a little bit scared, a little bit on edge, just one thing and it's a tinderbox. And uh, Adam, without giving too much away, but uh, <clears throat> with rehearsal so far, what do you think audiences can expect from their night out when they come and see Looking Good Dead? Um, they're going to get a good shot. Um, it's, there's a lot of twists. The script, the script's really clever. I'm really clever. Um, it's it's got us all asking various questions because we we're, we're getting our heads around um, sort of like the backstory, the bits that are underneath it, the thoughts behind. Um, the actions so basically we can get the truth out of it and play play it for real um, the twists in it are good they're good twists but hopefully people won't see coming but we won't we won't signpost them or anything like that so when when it does happen there's one in particular hopefully we're gonna we're gonna get a gasp like Peter just um, said um, I think him having now said that, that's actually going to be my aim. <laughs> but, but we, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, I'm going to aim for a gasp. You know, like a comic aims to get a laugh on a certain line. I'm going to aim to get a gasp. That's going to be Love my target. It. <laughs> Love it. I um, you were saying about the twists, Adam. Thank you. I remember we were on, on, on the last play and I was doing a Q&A on stage with the cast. And somebody in the audience said, why, why do you make the end of your play so hard to guess? And I said, <laughs> haven't I done my job? <laughs> Hasn't Sean that's done his job? Yeah. No, yeah. That's, that's, how, that's how it should be. Should, oh. Yeah. If, if you, we've actually been saying this in rehearsals. If somebody comes back and watches it twice, um, 
their reaction is going to be different because they'll see something and go, oh, it was there. So we, yeah. we've got to be careful, but we get with those bits, but it's there, but it's not so there that it... And I, I wanted to go back, Adam, and talk about your time at the National Theatre um, back when you were 13, you know, because as I said, very few people ever have that claim to fame. It's, uh, it, was, it was a long, a long time ago. It's nearly, uh, it's nearly 40 years. Um, yeah, I was, um, I was the, the ragamuffin in On the Razzle, Tom Stoppard's um, at National. The, re the reason I'm looking forward to going back to Edinburgh um, is that was where we actually opened the show um, in 19... September 1981, I think, something about that. Yeah, I, I loved it. It was, um, that's probably when I fell in love with this, this job. Um, that's when I realised, that's when I got bit by the bug and realised, yeah, this is, this is for me. And I learned so much. I, I was working with Felicity Kendall, Ray Brooks, Denzel Landon, um, Michael Kitchen, Joan Hickson, John Challey. The list was just, just endless. And yeah, I, I loved every second of it. And the, but the, one of the questions I've got, I know it's on this bit of paper, but the best bit for me was I managed to skive off school and watch Guys and Dolls, the version with Bob Hoskins, <laughs> Julie McKenzie, Julie Covington, and in Charlton, and David Healy is um, nicely, nicely. Um, I managed to skive off school and I watched that from the read through to the opening night, literally all the way through. <laughs> Never went to school. Wow. Yeah, loved it. <laughs> so Gaynor, you were wonderful in the syndicate on the BBC. Um, how does oh, it feel flexing you. very different muscles now in the rehearsal room with a live play? What's what's the does that operate in different parts of your brain or is it sort of two very similar processes? Um no, they're quite different processes. I think I think the beauty for me is it's it's not that long since I was on stage. Uh, well it's a it's a year ago, but it's not such a big leap as I had a 10 year gap between TV and theater. And that was huge. So going back onto the stage for the first time after 10 years, that was, that was massive. And, and I kept blushing every time I raised my voice or I had more of a theatrical voice. I, I blush, not, not on the stage, but when we were in the rehearsal process. Whereas this is, this is great. It, it just being able to um, theatricalize, you know, your performance, I, I, I love, that being able to heighten it a little bit because obviously you have to keep everything so minimal on television um, and sometimes it's great to be able to unleash and especially in this show you know there are lots of ups and downs and in their domestic um, environment in their family you know type family group there's lots of stuff going on and you know they're a bit dysfunctional so um, it's great we, we go up and we go down whereas on TV you, you know you have to keep that smaller um, but we can actually really go for it. So uh, Adam's going to get the full wrath of me. <laughs> um, but that's oh. great. But the, the line learning, we were talking about the line learning. So myself and Adam, obviously coming from, so, you know, we've done lots of other things, but um, so uh, essentially you learn a lot of lines very fast and have to shred them. So the hard thing is, is, is learning lines and retaining them because we've got to, you know, this is a, a large amount of lines and retaining them. So it's a definitely a different part of your brain. You have to yeah. engage in theater. And, and that's, that's, that's the tough bit. But, um, and, and just the rehearsal period, you don't get rehearsals on, on in soap. Very, very, it's like, we call it rehearse record, but actually it's, this is where you're going to stand now, go for it. <laughs> How has it been um, like juggling all of the COVID restrictions and all that? That must be quite a, an extra level of faff that you maybe wouldn't have been used to before. Uh, well, no, for me, I've, I've, I've had them because I was... Uh, actually, Gang, you had it as well on the syndicate, didn't you? Um, yeah. we, we, both, yeah. we were both lucky enough to still be working or, or working um, through the early stages of lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we, we've, we've had... Uh, all the protocols we're, we're quite used to sort of working with um tennis balls as colleagues um and it, it's so nice to actually, it's so nice to actually now be talking to a human again um yeah it's it, it is what it is we've, we've all had to learn and adapt um we had to we had to in in tv um shows and it's no different to this um i've yeah. got to say rehearsals have been I think good um with yeah with what we've got in place um it's we, I think it's essential, isn't it? Yeah, it's trust as well. That's the other it's thing. 
it's essential to get this play up and on so mm. that we all trust each other. We all adhere to the rules and, you know, Josh and everybody's really behind keeping safe. So we have our temperature taken. We have to wash our hands before we go into the rehearsal space. We touch our own props. We have we have it all marked out so that we're not, unless we're actually acting and we have to keep masks on around the place. We're very lucky because we have a, a little garden in this rehearsal space so mm. we can go outside, but we still, you know, do the social distancing. Well, we're, still, we're still miles We apart, really want yeah. this to work. Uh, yeah, that's true, that's true. But we want it to work. We want it on. We want to get this this incredible um, play out there, and and you know, so we have to follow the rules, and you know, that's that's all there is to it. Going back to, to Peter, obviously now you've had some wonderful stage versions of your, your your books, and seeing so many audiences by their thousands now, almost on an annual basis, um, coming to see your work. That must be. Has it got to the point now when you're when you're writing, you're thinking, oh maybe this one would be a good one for a play, or, oh, how would I make that work on stage? Is that, or is that sort of very different compartmentalizations? No, it's a good question. And I mean, I think Sean McKenna, who's done all the adaptations, is an absolute flipping genius. Because when you write a novel, you can have as many characters as you want. If I want to have a train crash, I can have a train crash. If I want a car chase, a car chase, I can have scenes all over the world. That's all got to be distilled down to, you know, around eight, nine characters, pretty much one set with a few additions to it. And, and, and yet maintaining the integrity of the novel and, and the tightness of the story. And I think on the one hand, it helps the writer if you've just got that, as I said before, the crucible of the theater, because you've got that condensation, you've got that claustrophobia naturally there. But, um, I do think about it. I do think with every book, I, I, I so much love the live theater. Um, and so I'm always thinking with every book, I wonder if this will make a play. And, and, and Sean reads and goes, no, nah, not that one, no, nah, too, too complex. <laughs> um, but we've got the next one, we've got the next one, which we're planning, which I'm excited about. Um, and I, I do want to say that I think that cast is so key. And, and, and in these two, Gaynor and, and Adam here right now. I, I feel genuinely blessed. I think I've got- Oh, thank you. Are, honestly, you're, you're both absolutely so right for the characters, <laughs> as well as being such lovely people. And I think oh, you know, I've got a, you. I really feel a dream team because you know, Josh is just brilliant, brilliant. Actually, actually, we need to give a good shout out to, to Josh because he's, he's, he's been brilliant getting this on. Um, Absolutely. All, all, all the times it's been postponed and knocked back, and he's he's stuck with it. He's he's showing faith, and yeah, I think I think credit to him for ploughing through. I think that that's all I've got time for with you, wonderful people. I will leave you to your afternoons. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, every time I do these sorts of interviews, it just makes me smile knowing that live theatre is going to be coming back after so long, and this community that is so. Uh, wondrous and vibrant is finally going to be able to commune once more. Um, thank you and I cannot wait to see Looking Good Dead. Um, seeing you guys, the energy that's between you has is, is been utterly splendid and if, if you bring that energy to the stage I think that every single person watching is going to have an absolute call um, and so break a leg for the rest of rehearsals and for your opening because it is going to be a blast I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you, Bye. Alex. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Adam.